previously on the Project Hydra server. The Fandalorian? Wait, what is this code of honor? Yeah, I don't really know. I just, you know, I wanted to sound cool. But, you know, here you go. Have fun. By the way, maybe you want to go ahead to the end. I hear some of the agents here on the server are going on a big treasure hunt out there. Uh, I'll head out there right away then. Good. <laughs> what was that? I said, uh, oh, good. Fandalorian armor. I'm, oh, I'm excited for this. Hey there, hi there, ho there. Welcome everybody to another episode of The Fandalorian. It's another Minecraft episode on the Project Hydra server. This is season two, episode four. I finally moved out of my little ship here. So I, I jumped ship, I tunneled my way all the way over to this nice location here, and I built a little base to store my stuff. It's safe from the ghasts. They won't shoot me in here because I've slabbed up everything. I've moved my good friend Pjork over here so I have somebody to trade with. Hi Pjork, how you doing today? I got a villager breeder going on. You can hear that in the background. But most importantly, First Mate Featherworth and I have moved to our new base in the nether. And it is very much a cozy place to live. Got the respawn anchor as a bed. Got a flower farm, super smelter, some storage. Then I got a rudimentary wood farm here for some acacia wood. I got a teleporter room right here. It's not finished yet. And then I have a transportation area hub right here. This rail line goes to the gold farm. And this rail line right here goes down to the nether tunnel. And today, we are going to the end. Because as you may have remembered from last episode, I was talking with True Monk, and he said some of our server companions are going to the end for a large treasure hunt. And I thought it would be a good idea to join them and see if we can't pick up some goodies of our own. So I got my ender chest all kitted out with some building blocks to bridge across the void, uh, some golden apples, extra food, chests to turn into shulker boxes, a whole host of arrows, and can't forget the looting sword, and a spyglass so we can help see through the distance. Got some ender pearls and a water bucket to help with the fall damage. So yeah, we are ready to head to the end and see what kind of treasures we can pick up. Okay, this should be it. That's world generation for you. Put the uh, end portal right in the middle of an ocean. Obviously, I wasn't the first to be here. In fact, I'm probably the last. So we'll have to see how many end cities I'll have to pass over before I can find one with a ship that actually still has an elytra in it. I see some shops here. It's like people are selling stuff. Hell's Corner, opt owned by Malforian. What we got here? Suggestions, orders, here, block corner, unique specials, item corner. I need items. What do we have here? Signs? Oh, diamond per stack of gunpowder. Diamond is 16 enderpearls. Yes, please. So let's climb up to this node here. And begin our descent to the greater end. Remote getaway, indeed. All right, let's not look at the Enderman. I want to head in the same direction that my base is in, and that being the southwest. So this is east, that's south, that's west. Okay, so southwest is that way. Looks like somebody already made a trail, so we'll just follow that until we can't go anymore, and then we keep going. I recently went on vacation to Yellowstone National Park. And do you know what they had there? Thermal features. That's right. We're talking geysers. We're talking paint pots. We're talking heated pools. And we're talking steam vents. 
For today's installment of Handicraft Corner, I thought it would be a great idea to try out geysers and thermal features in Minecraft. I prepared an array of thermal features to try out and showcase today. Uh, I made this one right here. It is a simple fountain with a little geyser feature in the middle. You just take some redstone and you get the comparator to repeatedly fire this dispenser here. And you get it to bubble up. Not bad, but we can do better. Blah. So over here, I have a little hot spring. Got gravel. Put some uh, campfires underneath the gravel to get the smoke to come out. Kind of looks like steam. It sounds nice. It's kind of tranquil. So you have this little thermal feature here, but it's kind of generic. Not much uh, going on here other than the, the particles. So if you want some variety, let's go to the next design. So this one, I took some stairs, slabs, and some dead coral. I still got the campfires making the nice uh, thermal smoke going on there. But uh, I also put a dispenser with some fireworks underneath this cobblestone slab. So if we wanted this to become a geyser and do an eruption... Not bad. Not bad at all. That's pretty good. But do you know what this one is missing? Even with all the texture variants, the geyser going off, and all that good stuff, there's no bacterial mat. When I was in Yellowstone, almost every single geyser was surrounded by a bacterial mat. A very wide range of colors flowing from the geyser and going off into the reach of the landscape. It was super beautiful. And that's what I got over here. It has a lot of features that can normally be found in geyser basins like Yellowstone. We got the beautiful colors of the bacterial mat with some wet sponges. We got some moss, raw copper and raw iron blocks, some raw gold for variety, but the sea pickles there for some, some more organic growth. I have a layered pool system going on here. So we have, we have our hot spring here on top with a geyser feature, of course, right there. Um, and then it layers down into multiple pools and multiple bacteria mats. So this one is pouring out of the top on this side, and it's even going around and heating up some of the river next to it. So we walk around the bacterial mat, which you're not supposed to do. Do not walk on real-life bacterial mats. It disturbs the landscape. Thank you very much. Again, I used the cobblestone, some mossy cobblestone, and I added some carpets this time. So we got lots of variation in the natural landscape here. Of course, we got the thermal smoke coming up, but what I also added was instead of water, I used layers of transparent glass in multiple shades and colors to make it appear like an endless pit going down into the earth itself. So this is what a lot of the heated pools I saw looked like. It was absolutely stunning and beautiful. Another feature that was pretty common in Yellowstone for geyser basins with bacterial mats is some of them uh, actually erode the trees that are indigenous to the area. So what we have here is some stripped birch and some sandstone pillars to show where the water originally wore away at the base of the tree. And the rest of the tree I used with the acacia wood and the andesite walls to do a little variety of the trees here. So these trees are all dead because of the bacterial mat killing them through there. And I saw a lot of this going on in Yellowstone. It was harder to see in the winter, but it did kind of look like each of the trees was wearing a white sock. One last feature I added with the thermal feature here, and the geyser going off as well, is some pools will actually drain after the geyser goes off, which is actually really incredible to see a pool drain and fill up just like a bathtub in real time. So to mimic that, I added this redstone lever over here, so we'll see the geyser go off, and we'll see it drain into the river here. There we go. Got the geyser going off. We see the drainage into the river here, over the bacterial mat. 
And then when the geyser is done going off, we'll just flick that lever, and it drains. Just like that. And there you have it. Very realistic version of a geothermal feature inspired by Yellowstone. So if any of you want to use this in your builds in the future, go ahead and uh, use my inspiration. I created this myself, and I was inspired by real-life thermal features in Yellowstone National Park, and I would highly encourage people to go there, get some inspiration for yourself, or if you want, you can use this block palette and try it yourself on your own servers. So, if your friends don't find you captivating, they should at least find you crafty. And if you would excuse me, I gotta go warm up. Brrr. Okay, so I've been traveling for about 10 minutes now, and I've uh, made it to about 1850 on the Z coordinate. And uh, what do we have over here in the distance? Hmm. If I had to guess, it's somebody's wither farm. On second thought, let's not uh, interfere with the wither farm. Tis a silly place. But I know I have feather falling. <gasps> Rendered in the distance. There's hope. I see a ship. It's a big one. Oh, look at the size of that city. Oh, yes. And I think as soon as I get over there, we can fight our way up the end city and get our wings. All right. I'll just set up my base camp at the bottom of the city. Here goes nothing. Ooh. Gotcha. Well. Next stop, the ship. Aim for the mast. Perfect. It's one. There's usually three shulkers on a ship. You think you can defeat me? Aha. Uh -huh. And then... Come on, open up. Ooh, there you are. The wings. This is it. We did it! Got it! I have Elytra! Alright, first thing I want to do is put that in a safe place. We did it! We got some wings! Now let's see about liberating the rest of the fortress. Look at that. Another city. Let's head on over to that city in the distance. Please make it. We did it. There's an angry Enderman around here somewhere. Let's get a good look at this city here. Wait, what's that? What's that brown dot on the top of the city? Oh no. It can't be. Not him. Not him. Smelly's back! Today's episode is brought to you by Lapis Lazuli. Lapis Lazuli is a rare ore block that comes in both regular and deep slate. Mining La La Lazy Town can be done with Silk Touch to obtain either the regular version of Lazy Liabilities or the Deep Slate Lemon Lactose. Alternatively, you can use a Fortune Pickaxe to increase the drop rate 
of lovely lacerations to up to 36 little labyrinth items per lava lackluster ore block. Now that's a lot of liver landmarks. The main use for leaky languish in the game is to enchant your armor, tools, and weapons by placing either one liquid lacrimose, two level latrines, or three Latin legislatures into the enchanting table, you can place enchantments directly onto your favorite pieces of gear using a complicated language menu system that nobody's figured out yet. Don't forget to bring enough experience levels. LeBron liberalism is also one of the best sources for creating blue dye. Simply take one piece of labor litigation to a crafting bench, or even open your personal inventory, and convert the livid loneliness into blue dye. Then you are free to give Lambda here the bright shiny blue coat that she's always wanted. Here you go, Lambda. She loves it. Want to play a fun prank on your friends? Lunar Longevity has you covered. Simply replace your friend's pond water with blocks of laughing lollipops, and see how long it takes them to notice. Whoops! So remember, the next time you're looking to enhance your gear with random enchantments, or dye something blue, to think of Lighthouse Lubricant. Lumber Lullaby, the natural way to fall asleep. I mean, uh... Locust Lactation. The milk that's taking the country by swarm. No, 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 that's not right. Landfill loudspeaker, the refuse you can dance to. Uh, no, um, laundry lithium? Uh, lowest laxative? Laser lobster man? Larger ladybugs? Lunchtime locator? We're back home safe and sound. We got the hands of the villagers behind us. We got... First Mate Featherworth, whistling away over here, and we got our Elytra in hand, and we're just going to keep that safe in the Ender Chest until we can get some enchantments on it. So you may have noticed that it's episode 4 into the season, and I only have one farm on the server, and that's my gold farm. I love it, it's a great design, Waddles did a great job designing that farm, and I use it almost every time I log on to regain my levels. Uh, make some gold, use it for trading with Pjork over there. But we are far behind everyone else on the server because lots of people have farms with villager trading halls and all that cool stuff that they can trade and help me out. So I want to return the favor, I want to play some catch-up, and I want to build some farms. So here is a triple time-lapse of me creating a drowned farm for copper ingots and tridents, a bee farm for honeycomb, as well as a stem farm for crimson and warp stems. So, without a further ado, roll that time lapse.
Well, that was fun. And as you can see, I got a whole host of bees right here, and they're all trapped in this one by one little tunnel here. And I got a little rail cart going around, picking up all the honeycomb, and it is super productive. Over here, through our little warp room, we have our stem and our uh, drown farm. So, as you can see, the stem farm, which I have actually not uh, tested yet. Um, this is a shulker craft design. We got a TNT duplicator on the top. We have a bone meal machine down there next to the crimson and warped nylium. So when a, a mushroom tree grows, the pistons will push it along. And when the pistons activate, it will also activate the TNT duplicator which will cause a TNT to land on each of one of these obsidian blocks, causing whatever has accumulated in this space here to be destroyed and fall into the collection system here. The drown farm uh, sends drown from spawning in this area. Looks like somebody left some shulkers over here. Uh, I know I talked with Chairman and Domino Phoenix on how to improve the rates because it was not that successful. However, I spent two weeks on the drown farm alone. Thank you to whoever did that and is helping me here. Chairman, Domino, Maddie. I know Maddie also helped reactivate it. And the next time we get a tree formation, it should send out... There we go. And it has released the TNT. And we got blocks. So now that the three farms are done, now it's time for us to go and enchant our elytra. Blocks go! We made it! Some rockets. I'll just take a small stack, I don't need too many. Unbreaking, mending, got our jetpack. We finally got our wings after all this time. Time to take to the skies. And that's going to be it for today's episode, so I hope you all enjoyed watching. In the meantime, I gotta fly, so I hope to see you all again in the next episode. And as always, bye for now. Lockdown Landlubber? Landmark Larceny? Lucid Loyalist? Ladle Landscaping? Larynx Lasagna? Looming Logarithms? Lusty Laundromat? Ligma Leprosy?